guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We are here at the M1 Concourse in Detroit, Michigan. Technically Pontiac, Michigan, but you know this week is all about Dodge with Dodge Speed Week, and we got something new from Mopar. This is it. This is the all-new 2023 Dodge Hornet. This one is the GLH, but before we get into this hot hatch of a compact SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. If you think the Hornet name is something new, it's not. Go all the way back many decades to the Hudson Hornet. Remember the movie Cars? Yes, that Hudson Hornet. Now what's interesting is that this vehicle is kind of long overdue. The Hornet name returned in 2006 at the International Auto Shows on a smaller SUV. And now it's back in a big, big way. It was supposed to go into production in 2010, but because of the downturn in the economy, Dodge decided to put their focus somewhere else. Now, as we're moving forward with electrification, with other forms of propulsion, Dodge has a big task to bring performance, especially to a new crowd. So this being a compact SUV is one of those classes of vehicles where there's a lot of people that are buying and shopping, and of course, the young standout. So what I wanna find out is, is this Dodge Hornet, this particular one being the GT, but with the GLH trim set up, is this really a performance SUV you should be buying? Let's dive in, find out what's new, and see if we could answer that question. Let's check it out. Right off the bat, the proportion. So when you think compact SUV, think Mazda CX-5. That would be a perfect example of the overall size of this vehicle. Now at the front of the business, you're gonna see some of that di direct connection with other Dodge products, and it all starts at the front end. I love the way they did the LED headlights. You got a blacked out interior on the headlight housing. Love how they did the daytime running lamp. And then as we kind of come down, the great news is you do have this gloss black area of a little bit of vent. Now, I am gonna have to zonk this because it is not a functional vent. It would have been nice for them to put some, maybe some LED fog lamps in that area, but from an aggressive standpoint, they did a great job extending out the front fascia, especially on this lower portion, bringing that lower lip down on an angle. Now, as we come across the front grill area. This is where, like I said, you see a little bit of charger, a little bit of challenger, and everything else goodness. In the center, you have that iconic mail slot design, just like you're putting an envelope at the post office. We got a forward-facing camera blacked out on the Dodge badge. So it's interesting how they decided to just go with the two hash marks, does not actually say Dodge on the front of the vehicle, kind of cleans it up. We got some gloss black, full functionality and on the lower portion, more functionality. And what you're gonna see is lots of cooling that is needed for the heat exchangers behind this front fascia. I even like the way they work the front lip. Everything is blended in very clean and I'm digging the stripes. Now the way that they did this is not actually gloss black stripes, they put satin black with the red to make it really stand out and pop. Now when we get up onto that low slung hood, you'll see that red stripe on the driver's side with the GLH name. If you don't know anything about Dodge and where GLH comes from, it literally stands for goes like hell. And the last time that GLH appeared on a Mopar product was all the way back in 1990, if you could believe that. So quite a bit has changed, but nice to see that performance. And that's what this is all about, is not only producing some performance underneath the hood and at all four corners, but also that style. What you're gonna notice when it comes to style is not only do you have heat extractors on the hood, they match the design of the front grille, these are functional. And I love the way that they kind of carved a nice little valley in the hood to give it that, uh, that extra aggressive look. Now, when we come around the bend, one of the touches with this GLH is that it actually sits a little bit lower than your standard Dodge Hornet. So something to think about, and there's gonna be technically three different trims, GT, RT, and then this GLH. Now coming around the bend, when you're looking at performance setup, what do we got? Very unique style wheel. You'll notice the machined aluminum sections all the way around, and these wheels are actually wrapped with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Really nice style all the way around, and what you're looking at is 20-inch wheel, 
There's our Dodge badging. You got Brembo calipers. So even though it's got the Dodge script on it, these are Brembo official calipers up front. You're gonna have a special tuned suspension, all four corners. And when I say special tune, we're talking about a brand called Coney. Think about it, performance, racing. Brembo is one of those names that means performance. Coney is one of those names that means performance in handling and braking. And of course, Michelin's, those Pilot Sport Forest tires give the direction of this vehicle. And guess what? Standard is all wheel drive. So you're gonna get that grip, no slip, out of this setup. Now, one of my favorite things that they did is they went with a dark gray finish around the fender opening. I like that because it kind of makes it look a little bit more cleaner rather than flat black. And it gives it a nice definitive separation between the fender opening and the rest of the fender as you get closer to the hood. Dodge is all about the badges. You think about the Rumble Bee, you think about the Hellcat badge, there's our new badge. There is the Hornet ready to sting. And one of the things I like about a Hornet compared to a bee is a Hornet could sting over and over and over again. And that's what this vehicle is about when looking at the other competition in that compact SUV class. Now you're gonna get color match on the mirror caps, 360 degree cameras. You got your LED turn signals blended in. I'm also digging how they did the striping. Just tasteful enough, nothing too gaudy as it flows towards that GLH. What does it stand for? Goes like hell. If you haven't been paying attention, I'm gonna repeat that a couple more times. On the lower portion, we got that nice gray with a little buff. It's actually painted and flat gray to kind of give it that nice sill as it comes down. Roof line, you'll see from the side of the vehicle. I'm six feet tall, there's the dimensions. This one, like I said, is sitting just a little bit lower. I love the way they actually did the striping all the way down the roof line. You got a color match shark fin antenna. And then you'll also notice as you come towards the rear, that fender line, how it goes cleanly into the back. And I'm gonna have Lori kind of follow me back around to really showcase the tail end of the business of this Dodge Hornet. Now at the end, look at the way they did the lighting. Full LED, super slim. So this really ties it in with the Dodge Charger. You got your GT badge. This one is the upgraded GLH. It's got the track pack. It's got the 20 inch wheels. It's got all the performance goodies. Look at the way the striping comes all the way down. Even the Dodge logo lights up. Very, very nicely done. The big zonk though is that wiper. And I wish they went with a more aggressive spoiler up top. This spoiler needs to come out and kind of pivot up just a little bit to give it that something extra special. But coming back down to the ground level, we got some of that dark gray finish and you got a cat back exhaust, very sexy. This is meant to give it a little bit of rumble, nice slash cut. Look at the satin black tips on both sides and super clean on the diffuser. So let me know so far, what are you, thought, what are you thinking about this Hornet shape? Why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and check out what's powering it. All right guys, we got the hood pop up before. I talk about what's underneath the hood. If you're confused, why are we looking at this blue one? They actually have the three separate trims here, GT, the RT, and of course the GLH. Now, the other two are very, very pre-production. So this is where we're gonna show you underneath the hood and also the interior. Nothing wrong with that because guess what? It all carries through. Obviously what's gonna change depending on the trim, it's just some of the finishes, but this is what we have to do to bring it to you first. But let's go ahead, check out underneath the hood. You do have hydraulic hood struts. We had those functional heat extractors on the other side, and you can see the openings right here for those functional heat extractors, nicely placed. Working our way down, not the sexiest of engines, but what I do like is you have the turbocharger set up front. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of information, so just hold on tight and enjoy the ride here. What you're looking at on this Hornet GT is gonna be a two liter turbocharged inline four. Now official numbers are not out yet, but you're looking at least 265 horsepower plus some. So it's gonna be greater than 265 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque, like I said, standard all-wheel drive. You got a limited slip diff. It's mated to a nine-speed automatic. Zero to 60 on this particular GT, you're looking around 6.5 seconds. Now, on the GLH, it's gonna be this setup, but with extra power. On the RT, that is a big change. That is actually the first electrified vehicle, performance vehicle, 
from Dodge. It's a plug-in electric hybrid. It's got a 1.3 liter turbocharged engine with a electric motor outback called the E-axle. 285 horsepower at least, but it's supposed to be greater than that because they're giving us a little info on how much it's going to be plus some. 383 pound-feet of torque. The great news on the plug-in electric hybrid is you have that power shot push to pass. That's going to give you a boost of 25 horsepower and, of course, give you greater 0 to 60 acceleration times. Now, like I said, looking underneath the hood, not the sexiest of engine covers and engines, period, but it is turbocharged, does have all-wheel drive, and it does have a limited slip diff. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the interior and see what Dodge is bringing for 2023 and the Hornet. All right, guys, we're inside this 2023 Dodge Hornet. Like I said, this being the GT, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I've been wanting some kind of performance-oriented SUV. I've been looking at the Mazda CX-5 Turbo, but I feel like it needs a little something extra. What are we looking at price-wise? So starting price on the Dodge Hornet is going to be $29,000. Depending on how you option it, it could go all the way up to $37,000. And that includes things like the track pack, which involves the 20-inch wheels, which this has, the Brembo brakes, which this has, and then you could go GLH and get the catback exhaust and some of the other performance goodies. But let's see what you're getting for the money to the door panels. So you'll notice new clean style. I do like the way you have some of that gray around the door handle area. I just wish the top portion of the door panel was softer. It's actually like a hard, hard rubber. So not my favorite, but the armrest is very soft. The red stitching gives it a nice little flash of color. No gloss around the switch gear, which is a big plus. Now the door pocket is a little tight, but you will be easily able to fit four Twinkies in there and a bottle of Yoohoo to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, I love what they did with the AC vents. Nice shape, nice control knobs. You got a little bit of orange peel finish, which I'm surprised they went with this route. I wish they would have went a different texture, but you do have the smooth here with that red stitching and it flows nicely right to the center stack. What do we got? 10.25 inches of visual goodness. So obviously you're going to have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, you connect five. This is the performance page area. You got turbo boost, torque, oil pressure. You could go into your drag race setting and actually record zero to 60, zero to 100, your quarter mile time, braking distance, all that good stuff, plus have all the rest of your regular readouts. Really, really cool how they do this whole setup. And there is the Dodge Hornet. How cool is that? Working our way down, I like the toggle switches and I like the way they're flat black. A little bit of gloss black, nothing too crazy. You got your start stop button mounted high and out of the way. You got a 12 volt USB-C, USB-A. On this one, you have a place to put your phone or I would probably put maybe four Hot Pockets. On higher trims, this is wireless charging. This is gonna control your nine speed automatic. You got an actual volume knob, which is a nice touch. And then you work your way to two cup holders, a small armrest, but it's nice and high and up and out of the way. Open this up, you could put easily a can of Raid so you could kill hornets that are buzzing after you in your own hornet. And then the seats, the embroidery on the headrest with the Dodge logo, the red stitching, even the red through the perforated material, nice bolstering. On this particular trim, you have manual control seats for the passenger and the driver. Of course, depending on the trim, you could get electric assist, but why don't you get your butt over here? I wanna show you behind the new wheel in the all new Hornet. All right guys, business time behind the wheel of the new Hornet. Now you'll notice no aluminum sill plate or anything like that on this particular GT trim, but we got a good size pedal box, aluminum brake pedal and throttle. I like the size of the dead pedal. I would just like a, some aluminum down here. So it'll be interesting to see what the RT and the GLH bring to the table. This one has manual seat control. So you got the ability to raise and lower the seat. And then of course, adjust the back portion of the seat. I'm six feet tall. And even though it's a compact SUV, plenty of room in here. Steering wheel, looking good. Flat bottom, love the leather. Look how high end this looks with the two-piece leather perforated, nice stitching. You got your sport button, 
on the higher trims like the GLH and the RT, you'll have your push the pass, that power shot button. And then we got digital gauge display, clear graphics. I can't wait to show more of this. Obviously this is a pre-production, so we can only show you what's displayed here, but you know it's LED and I see the graphics so nice and clear. Steering wheel is manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, which is a nice touch. But while we get into the back seat, it's all about caring and sharing, just like Barney used to say, let's check out how much room there is for your passengers in the Hornet. All right, guys, backseat time in the Dodge Hornet. Surprisingly, once again, nice seating space. And what's great is, is that I feel like I'm a little bit higher than the front two passengers, the driver and the passenger, which gives me a nice view out the windshield. Backs of the seats, you got that microfiber suede material all the way around, nice size pocket. You could easily put five to six fly swatters back here. So if the, wa the wasps and the hornets and the mosquitoes are bugging you, if you don't want to spray the raid, give them a good old whack. I'll even put a couple chopsticks in there so you could do it Mr. Miyagi style and get it. Brings you a bunch of good luck. Speaking of good luck, we do have some nice controls back here. You got your AC vents, you could open them and close them, USB-C and USB-A. I got my own pocket in here and there's a weird napkin. Somebody like drop their snot rag in here. It happens at these auto unveiling events. I'm gonna kick it under the seat. Hopefully nobody saw that. But sitting back here, I'm not hunched over at all. What makes it even more comfortable? Charmin approved softness, two cup holders, and they even did the red through the perforated material for the rear seats. But you know what? This is an SUV. They're calling it a hot hatch. Let's lift the hatch and see what kind of cargo space we have in the Hornet. All right, guys, time to open up that rear hatch. Real simple, on this GT trim, it is manual, but we'll see what the other trims bring. You lift it up, it's nice and light. You're gonna be greeted to a pretty good amount of space, both width and height. On the driver's side, you do have a 12 volt and some interior lighting. You actually have a rear pass-through, which is a nice touch for those passengers back there. And then if you need more space, let's say you went to Costco and you got that big, box of Twinkies, 175. Watch this. You take the cargo floor, and then now we're just gonna put it all the way down to maximize the height of this cargo space area. But you know what? I know you're dying to go on throttle in this Hornet. So am I, especially the GLH. If you're ready, I'm ready though. They're gonna kick us out of here. We're gonna bring it to you soon. Stay tuned for that. We need to wrap it up from the M1 Concourse event and this Hornet. Let's do it. All right, guys, we got one more day left of the Dodge Speed Week homecoming here at the M1 Concourse. Now, before I ask you that very important question, I just wanna showcase one last time, there is the GT trim in that beautiful color that does have the 20 inch wheels with the track pack and the Brembo brakes. And then they also did bring out for our viewing pleasure a very early pre-production of the RT trim. So that would be that plug-in electric hybrid in a very stunning col color called Acapulco Gold. And that's really another thing that kind of ties in the whole Dodge Brotherhood muscle car performance vehicle are the names. You got Cue Ball, 8 Ball, Acapulco Gold. There's so many of them that really just mean more than just a color on a vehicle. But let me know what you think. First of all, we gotta thank everybody at Dodge, especially Darren and David, for getting us access to their freshly unveiled Hornets in the flesh so that you could see them. Let me know what you think. Has Dodge made that right step to really expand their portfolio, bring more people into what they call the brotherhood and have that performance-oriented SUV? Put it in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. We'll come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We got to give it up to the muscle behind the lens. That would be LG Rady. Show Lori some love in that comment section. Stay tuned for a novel from this famous videographer known as LG Rady. Thank you, Lori, for all that you're doing. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.